So let's connect it up here. April 17th, 2022. We're going to talk about the Walking Dead universe as a whole. Wait for YouTube and everybody to join and to connect and wait for us to uh, just get it going here. Top chat, super chats are always welcome, guys. So thank you guys for being here this Easter Sunday if you celebrate Easter. But um, yeah, we're going to be talking about the Walking Dead universe as a whole, but we will talk about Fear the Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 9, a little bit of 10 as well. But um, I watched Season 7, Episode 9, and we'll, don't worry, we'll get into that stuff too. So we'll wait for everybody to connect and join. It'd probably be a, you know, a lower-filled you know, stream because of Easter Sunday. Also, Fear the Walking Dead doesn't get nearly as much attention in the Walking Dead universe. But either way, it's a fun thing to talk about here. We've got to put the general spoiler warning out because we're going to talk about a bunch of things. I don't know what you know, what you don't know. Yeah, I don't really have much information about the Walking Dead Season 11 Part 3. But um, we can always talk about that. There's a lot of rumors going around. We'll address those. I made a video yesterday that I will post tomorrow about the big rumor that's going around about the Carol and Daryl show. But right now it's rumor city. You know, when the walking dead is on break, that's when the rumors come out, right? Like when you watch an episode or Angela Kang or Gimple or whoever talks, Greg Nicotero talks about things in an interview inside the episode or whatever they do talking dead or whatever kind of interviews that they do. There's facts. There's stuff right there. Now, when it's on break, like it is until fall 2022, there's a lot of people going to be potentially spreading a bunch of rumors, speculation, ideas, theories, stuff they heard, stuff they made up, you know, whatever it is. There's a bunch of different things on there too because, you know, I can come up with a stuff. I can come up with something. I heard that Daryl is actually not going to do anything after the walking dead because of his wife and his is a child or i don't even know if diane and him are married yet but his child and he wants to take a break from it now i could i could spread that rumor i could talk about that but right now i just made that up on the spot but somebody could hear that and read that and start oh my god daryl's not going to do this and norman Reedus doesn't want to do this anymore on there too but that's what stuff happens until there's validity or sources or you know validness to anything it's all rumor, speculation, everything there too. So a lot of people like Tony says, episode nine and 10 was so bad. If this was what we get the whole season, I hope fear ends. So fear is not ending. Fear is going to be having a season eight. That's for sure. The showrunner or the showrunners, I, I, I'm not sure if it was both showrunners or one of them, uh, talked about season eight of Fear of the Walking Dead and why season 7B is so important but it kind of just looks like they're setting up season eight. So what are they really doing here with the back half episodes, these eight episodes? What's it going to be with Strand and Morgan and Alicia and Madison when she comes around? So I don't know. But again, we'll talk about some general topics. We'll leave the Fear of the Walking Dead season seven and season seven, episode nine and ten discussion and recap and all that stuff until the last 45 minutes of the stream. But thank you guys for being here. I truly appreciate it. Happy Easter if you celebrate it, everything. Um, just It's Easter Sunday, so it's just my wife and I here in the house, so we'll take it easy. We'll have a low-key Easter if you're going to have the kids over or see the family. Hopefully, you're safe and sound, and it's not too crazy, that's for sure. So the latest stuff about the Walking Dead universe is that they wrapped filming for season 11, part three. Sinoy is in the process of changing the Alexandria. The walls are still up. The windmill is still up for uh, the shell of it. Like they took down the outer pieces of wood, the blades are down and the stuff is there. So they probably quit on Friday or Thursday. Took a long weekend. They probably didn't have Friday. It'll probably come down this week just because of the holiday weekend. They'll probably be back to work on Monday to take down the stuff. The big question will be, what happens when the walls come down? How are they going to do that in and around? I don't know what the neighborhood's going to be called. Because if you can just walk around, that'd be pretty cool to walk around Alexandria. How cool would it be to walk down the street inside Alexandria? And right now it's a neighborhood. So, you know, like, it, it's kind of interesting to see where it goes. So 
I want to talk. I made a video, like I said about earlier in the stream, I made a video about the huge rumor that's going around at the Carol and Daryl show. So I'll post that tomorrow. But since you guys are here, we'll talk about it too. So I don't know where this rumor started, who it came from, why it's out and about, but somebody said that Melissa McBride, who plays Carol Pelletier on The Walking Dead, has dropped out of the Carol and Daryl show because of the filming, recording, time, whatever they plan to actually do the filming of the show. And somebody was talking about Angela Kang changed her Instagram bio to get rid of the Carol and Daryl show. So it says the Walking Dead Universe showrunner now or whatever. So a lot of people are wondering and hoping that it's not true. Some people don't want to have the Carol and Daryl show. Some people are glad and they just want the stuff to end. I want stuff to I just stuff I just want the stuff to go planned accordingly, be a rewarding finale of The Walking Dead season eleven. I don't care about the spinoffs until we get there. Let's worry about The Walking Dead. Well, let's talk. Let's worry about Fear of the Walking Dead now, and we'll talk about that in about ten minutes. So, The Walking Dead has a third and final part, and hopefully, you watch the first two parts by now. But the third and final part is end is starting this fall, which fall, if you look at the calendar, starts at the end of September. I think it's September twenty second to December twentieth or twenty first, and that is when the fall season begins. And they specifically wrote fall 2022. So a lot of us are thinking that it's going to take place in October rather than August. So I don't know if we're going to, if they're going to do that, how are we going to get Fear the Walking Dead season eight, a eight part one, whatever you, what do you want to say? But season eight of Fear the Walking Dead. I don't know about filming there. I don't know about any about that, but Tales of the Walking Dead is going to air this summer, which is probably, I guess it could end, it could air at any time now because they can move that to August. It says summer. So that might be our August show. So it may be August, whenever it is, or six episodes, six weeks. We'll get our Comic Con trailer in July. So April, May, into June will be our Fear the Walking Dead. Then July will be Comic-Con. Tales of the Walking Dead potentially. It could be, Tales of the Walking Dead could be June or July, but I'm guessing it's August to just make sense there that um, it could be, you know, make sense for that to be the August show now. So you have August to October, Walking Dead October to December, and that's the end of the year too. Jonathan Wilder, Q&A. How many spinoffs does it take to finish a Walking Dead franchise? Let's find out. One, two, the world may never know. That's true, John. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we just want to, I don't know about you guys, but I know I want to have a rewarding end finale of the show. A lot of shows have crappy endings. You know, more shows have bad endings than good endings. That's for sure, right? Andrew, hey. But it's one of those things where I don't know if it's going to be rewarding because the Daryl and Carol show was told to us, I don't even know when it was, before season 11 even started, right? I mean, I don't remember actually when it leaked or was said or how they talked about it. It's just so long ago, you know? Wilson says, the Tales trailer felt like Black Summer. I hope not because Black Summer in my eyes was incomplete. It was a hodgepodge, a mess, jumping around all over the place. Lack of storytelling, lack of anything. I hope Tales of the Walking Dead has nothing to do with Black Summer, in my opinion. Black Summer is a fine show on its own, but The Walking Dead is, is, has set the standard of it on there, too. So. so Tales of the Walking Dead didn't really have a trailer. It's just a quick little thing of six different stories, and you get to see a little bit. It's a small teaser. I wouldn't say it's a trailer by any means. But what classifies things as a trailer? Is it a teaser trailer? Is it just a teaser? Is it a trailer? I, I don't know. It, it just really wasn't. It was a little snippet of things and just we'll have to see. I do like the cast, though, of their, their six different stories, six different episodes, one of them being Alpha. She's clearly in 
one of the episodes because we see her in that little teaser too. So, But overall, guys, the Walking Dead universe is still going strong. I've enjoyed season 11 so far. I know some people don't like the Commonwealth stuff, but I think they've done a good blend of the show and the comic, and I think it's done well for what the story is. Now, the Commonwealth isn't the best story in the comic. It's kind of the ending and setting up the ending, and that's what you get with some drama here and there with Sebastian and the Miltons and Rick and Michonne and stuff there. But the show is the show. The comic is the comic, and we'll have to see how it plays out. But from the the behind-the-scenes stuff that I've seen and the video that I watched, you can go to our Facebook and check it out at the BT channel if you want to see that video. That the, the cast is saying that the pace and everything is really hectic, really crazy, really just go, 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 the final eight episodes. Now, the cast has to sell things every year, every season. Greg Nicotero is like, I'm really proud of our cast, and we, the writing is really great, and the story is going to be great. It's going to take you around a journey, and blah, 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 blah. And there's been times that it sucked. There's time that the writing was not that good. The story wasn't that good. You know, some things they had to do because of production. Maybe it was writing. Maybe it was budget. Maybe it was cast. Maybe it was whatever. I I don't know. It's not easy to have a a show for 11 seasons. Basically 12 seasons or 11 and a half seasons, whatever you want to think about it. It's It's not easy to do. Majority of shows are five, six seasons. Some of the best shows that I've ever seen. Sopranos, six seasons. Breaking Bad, six seasons. Better Call Saul is coming back tomorrow. Going to be six seasons. You know, the majority of shows are six seasons. It's very rare that you get an ER, uh, a Law and Order, a Seinfeld, Friends, you know, they're, they're like The Walking Dead. The majority of shows don't last. They stay in the single digits. You know, nine seasons at the most for a lot of stuff. And a lot of those shows, the the ending sucked. I don't don't know. So we'll have to see how it goes down. The Negan Maggie or the Maggie Negan show. Who do you you say first? The Maggie Negan or Negan Maggie, right? Because Maggie is the OG character. She's been around since season two. So I guess you say Maggie Negan. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But their show, Lauren Cohen has said that they're going to start filming, I believe, in June or July. I can't remember which month it was. But in New York. They actually plan to film in New York, which would be kind of cool. And I know, I I thought it was Georgia that had mainly, predominantly, the tax breaks. But so many states have tax breaks for the production of stuff. Now, Georgia gives two tax breaks because of the actual filming in Georgia and then putting the Georgia peach at the end. You get another another set of tax breaks and a certain percentage of it. I think it's like 30% or something around there. And I don't know if other states do that too. I know they have incentives as well. And there's like, I don't even know if it's like 40 some, 40 plus states that actually have tax breaks for filming. And I know Tales of the Walking Dead has filmed in Georgia, World Beyond filmed in Virginia, and maybe a little in New York, I'm not sure. Fear of the Walking Dead filmed in a couple different states. I believe they're coming to Georgia to film in Savannah. Uh, Tales of the Walking Dead, like I said, filmed in Georgia and a lot of places film in Georgia, but call it somewhere else. So we'll have to see how it goes down. But overall, guys, the Walking Dead universe is still going strong. Is it going to end strong? <laughs> Usually not. It's more likely that it will not film or not end in a strong, good way, even though they set things up. The trailer and stuff looks really good for part three, but when the trailers look really good, Sometimes it's not as good in production for what it is. But we'll have to see. We always know that the buildup is really great, but, you know, we'll have to see uh, what actually comes on screen. Because the trailers are there to entice and lead you one way. And a lot of times it's making you think this happens and, and it doesn't. You know, go back and watch. I, I, I remember going back and watching the season six trailer, right? Like, go back and watch that. And they paint this picture. Like it's going to be Rick versus Morgan and it's going to be civil war and they're going to fight each other. And none of that happened. The trailer sets this tone and it's misleading for sure. Jonathan Wilder, Q&A, Daryl finds Rick's gun in trailer. Does that mean Rick is nearby? Uh, No, it doesn't, John. The last time Rick's gun was in Rick's hands was in season nine, episode five. Judith has had that gun 
since Rick went away. So it's basically Judith's gun now. So either Daryl hid the gun, found the gun in the Commonwealth or something like that. A lot of people are painting the picture that Daryl finds the gun and Daryl finds Rick and Rick's going to be around. This is proof. No, it means none of that. Rick doesn't have his boots and he doesn't have his gun. Right? Because Judith had the gun since season nine and the boots Michonne has. So Rick does not have it. It makes us talk about it. And again, that's what trailers do. Mislead, misdirect, entice you to watch. Mass Ninja, do you think Daryl and Sebastian are going to have a full-on fight in 11C? Um, that wouldn't be much of a fight. Daryl would take out Sebastian right away, and it would be over. So, Jonathan Wilder, q &A, how would TV Rick, not comic Rick, handle the whisper? I don't know. I mean, that's the big question because Rick hasn't been around. He missed all that stuff, so it's hard to say. I think he, well, it was kind of weird. Just kind of think about it. And I'll talk about this last, uh, last thing here too, is that it was funny how we had no guns, really limited supplies, limited resources, limited everything. And then the whispers came around and they were like, oh man, these, these people are tough. What are we going to do about them? And then they took them out and now they got guns and ammo and all this stuff. They went to a military base and they found all this stuff after the whispers because they would have been mowed down pretty fast if they had a bunch of rifles and, you know, a 50 cal machine gun. Those whispers would last lasted about uh, two seconds too. So Bob Smith, morning. Where are you at, Bob? Morning. Happy Easter, guys, if you celebrate Easter. So let's talk about Dead in the Water for a couple minutes, and then we'll talk about Fear the Walking Dead. Even though Fear the Walking Dead to Dead in the Water is the same thing. So Dead in the Water was on AMC+. Plus. It is one episode of, uh, I think it's 41 minutes. Riley, it focuses on the USS Pennsylvania. You see Riley, and uh, you see a couple other people that we saw. Well, we saw the outfit that Morgan wears, Runwick's the captain of the boat or the, the submarine. And uh, that's the outfit, the Navy sailor that uh, Morgan was wearing, the outfit of his. I think it was Walter that had the key all around his neck in uh, season six. And season six just feels like an outlier after watching season seven so far. It just seems like who wrote season six compared to season seven? Like, let's get those people back. Season six writers were just, just better too. So. so Dead in the Water, it was kind of cool to see the Riley stuff, where he came from, and then it kind of sets things up. But it looks like it's just one episode, one six-part episode. That's like 41 minutes too. So not too janks. Do you think Maggie will run Commonwealth and take so soldiers to New York? Uh, Mag how can Maggie run the New York? Or how can Maggie run the Commonwealth and go to New York? That doesn't make sense to me. I think Ezekiel would probably be more likely to run the Commonwealth than anybody. They kind of hinted at that a little bit. Like he was setting things up, had the communities back, and he's there doing things for the community. So I think my pick is Ezekiel to run the Commonwealth, actually. So let's talk about Season 7, Episode 9, guys, of Fear the Walking Dead. So when I talked about the potential spoilers for Season 7, Episode 9, it's a filler episode, and they come true, and it's it's not a bad episode. You know, when I was first reading it, reading the stuff about it, I was like, wow, this episode sucks. You know, I don't, I don't like um, filler episodes when – really ever, <laughs> but bottle episodes, filler episodes, they're just kind of weak compared to things. I like Alicia. So you get to see Alicia, a new character, Paul. Arno is the guy that's looking like from Game of Thrones. It looks like he's a crow from the Night's Watch. Uh, and Morgan. That's it. That's the whole people that you see in this episode. In 710, you see Charlie, you see June, you see Howard, you see a new character, Ollie, you see uh, John Dory Sr., the tower stuff. You kind of see stuff there. So, but season seven, episode nine, let's focus on that, right, too. So it starts with Alicia having a dream 
a flashback of she's walking down this dirt road with her people from Teddy's place, her followers following her. She comes to a four-way stop in the road. She keeps walking straight. She hears a voice. She walks to the person. It's the walker, the Senator Walker. The Senator Walker attacks her. She goes down on the ground and then she wakes up. And when she wakes up, she's in a house. Somebody's house. We don't know how she got there. We don't know what happened, but Alicia's not doing well. There's this weird muffling sound where it's hurting Alicia's ears. As she's walking around, I can't help to notice the red walls. Red, red, all I see is red, and the red theory holds up yet again. But as she's walking down the steps, she hears the music. She looks at this gentleman who's kind of passed out on, I guess, the piano. He's on it, but he's laying on something. He's sitting on something, and he's laying down on something. He's sitting on a bench, and his head's on something. Alicia sees this walker going after the gentleman, and she knocks over this uh, receiver, a stereo. The stereo breaks. The guy turns around, kills the walker. Alicia is talking to the gentleman. He doesn't hear her because he's deaf, and the walker is killed. I don't know how the walker got in the house, but it. <laughs> either way, Alicia and the gentleman kind of argue a little bit. He says, I can't hear you. What? I can't hear you at all because he's deaf. And you see the cochlear implant, you know, hearing aid. And it's the exterior part there. And then there's a part that's like stuck to his head. It's red. It's bright red. It's obvious it's red. And it's stuck to his head. So there's like, there's a red walls. There's the red there. There's red bagpipes. There's red wires. There's a red kit. Like, it's not just like, ooh, there's one little subtle hit of red. Like, it's never that. It's in your face. It's like you got hit with a, a red paintbrush. And like, here you go. Here you go. Again. Want some more red? Here you go. It's just, it's obvious. So Paul is the guy's gentleman's name. And I actually like Paul. But the, what the Walking Dead universe loves to do, they bring in a new character. And in the same episode, boop, dead. So Paul is a guy that I actually liked. I think the actor did a great job. And it's kind of a shame that he's killed off in this episode. Basically, the whole purpose is that he protects Alicia from Arno. His name's not Arnold. It's Arno. What a weird Arno. He's the long-haired ponytail guy from Teddy's place. And he looks like Jared, basically. He's like C-list Jared from The Walking Dead. And he's trying to go after Alicia. He knocks on the door. Alicia's like, hide me. And Paul ends up hiding Alicia inside the piano, which is kind of laughable. And Arno goes around and he picks up the bottle of, you know, aspirin or whatever. And the pills are like half white and half red, you know, which is red everywhere. And he's like playing the piano and he's like, boop, 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 burr, 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 burr. It's your piano's out of tune. Have you seen the woman? Have you seen this? Blah, 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 blah. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't, you know, whatever. So then they leave. You know, that would be too obvious if Arno found Alicia right then and there, but they drag it out, stretch it out. And I'm like, why is Alicia here? The last time we saw Alicia, I believe, was her declaring war against, you know, a strand. It was going to be Morgan and Alicia versus Strand in the tower. But like, I guess that she was going to find Arno and try to recruit them because Arno's people is uh, they they have you know weapons and you need numbers in a war that's for sure. But it's basically Alicia doesn't trust herself. She's like people followed me and they died. They followed me and they died. The followers died. Yes, we know Alicia keeps saying it over and over again. And then Paul is like motivating her and he's like, well, you know, they didn't have a gun to their head and they didn't have to do this. They chose to do it. They followed you for a reason. And he's cooking and he, he cooks some haggis for, for Alicia and you can, Alicia's eating the food and I didn't really, didn't really like it. So Paul is basically used to protect Alicia, motivate her, and then he dies, (laughs) right? So basically Alicia's like, I have to get back to my people. I have to get back to my people. 
And Paul's like, well, no, you have to help me get the stereo that you broke first. Well, I don't know how to help you. I don't know where to go. Well, I do. And they go to a hall. And Paul used to play an instrument. And it's the backstory of Paul with his wife a little bit. He tells the story about his wife. And they go to the music hall place. And he said they used to play this and that. And his wife died when the bomb you know, exploded. And it's just a likable character. The actor does a good job. The story is there at all, too. And as Alicia and and uh, Paul are talking, Alicia hears a truck or whatever, you know, the, the horse and the, the walkers that are Arno's people are there. So she goes out, for some reason drops a glove on the ground to expose her, you know, spear bone hand thing. This looks terrible. And Arno catches her and basically is going to punish her for what she did and feed her to the walkers or let the walkers rip her apart. It's all dragged out and this and that. And they do this and then they cut to a, you know, a break and then they come back more dialogue, 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 dialogue. Alicia gets there as Arno's going to unlatch the walkers to come out of the thing. His hand is shot by Paul. Paul shoots one of the one of the thing one of the, one of the other people. Alicia grabs her her knife hand bone thing, stabs a walker. Arno is bleeding from his hand. Alicia and uh, Paul 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 drops his stereo. They get into a car and they talk. Uh, Paul wants to go back out and get the stereo. He can fix it. Alicia's like, no, don't do it. And then Paul's like, well, we got a stereo right here. So we'll just take the car stereo out, which, you know, I don't know how he got it out pretty easily. But either way, he ends up taking it out later on. And again, it's back to Alicia talks about a dream that she had when she was bit and she didn't turn. And maybe she was under for a couple of days and she, you know, had a dream. She hears a voice, but she doesn't know what to make of the voice. And she was following, you know, the senator, Padre, Padre, Padre. What's Padre? Is it this? They still don't know what Padre is. You know, it's, it's just like dragging it out, dragging it out, dragging it out. But it's done in a way that's kind of interesting. But if they're building up the war angle, it, it's just like, uh, I don't know. Ethan Q&A, will Daniel die in the season? I have no idea. Uh, I hope not. I like Daniel a lot. I hope Daniel sticks around for sure. So um, Arno gave Paul a radio when he was at his house earlier to uh, call him if he finds Alicia or he finds anything like that. So he has a radio to contact Arno. Paul comes up with an idea that he's going to set up a sabotage for Arno and his group. And he tells Arno to meet uh, at his house, which kind of reminds me of the farmhouse in season two, kind of. And it's um, Paul sets up speakers, the, a CD player, the Beethoven Ode to Joy plays. And big loudspeakers, Arno comes to the house with like four or five other guys and the door is locked and then all of a sudden the music starts blasting. Like it's music, it's like really loud classical music. But Alicia has, you know, um, earplugs in and Paul can't really hear. So they're fine, but Arno like kicks in the door Paul shoots at Arno, doesn't hit him. They come, the Arno's people come into the house. It's really funny. Paul smacks one guy with, with a guitar. He's like, <laughs> it's just kind of comical. But he hits him with a guitar. Alicia's fighting walkers. Arno's killing walkers, and they're doing this. As Alicia is fighting walkers, doing her own thing, Arno comes into the house, and he's killing walker after walker after walker. And... Paul has a knife and bagpipes in his hand, his wife's bagpipes that he was going to play, which are really red, by the way. It has red strings, and it's red for it. And so, again, the red theory is just blatantly to us, right? Um, so Arno's got his back to Paul. The speaker breaks. The music shuts off. Paul does this weird thing with a knife, and he's like, and he's like staring at Arno. Arno has a gun, Pew! shoots him. So then Alicia comes in, grabs him, throws him into a room, locks the door. And then Alicia says, you know, 
you're going to make it. You're going to be okay. So they put like this doily on it, put some pressure on his, he got shot in the gut. And so they're going to decide what to do. Arno is outside in the, the door now trying to get, you know, whatever his hand is bandaged up when he got shot by Paul. And so Alicia, you know, before it said that you can come with me, you can do this. And Paul kind of wanted to join him, join Alicia and her people, but he's not going to make it. So Alicia decides to make a run for it. So she gets out of the house and starts to run very dramatic past the big picture window, like running Baywatch style. Like it's kind of comical. And um, Paul is playing the bagpipes. He's like, like, it's just, he's, sorry, that was like a trumpet, but either way, he's playing the bagpipes. Arno gets in, points his gun behind Paul. Paul can't hear him. He doesn't know he's there, but he knows that he's giving himself up so Alicia can get away. Arno, very dramatic. One, two, like it's just so slow and then shoots him and um, Paul is killed. Alicia's running away from the house, very dramatic, and then she sees this chi- this kid with a gas mask on wearing these clothes that she runs down like this dirt road, and she's like, you again, and it looks like a girl, I can't really tell because she's got like a gas mask on, and then Alicia collapses, right? So it's it's crazy to think that Alicia passes out again. And as she's passed out, she kind of has the same dream again where she's walking down the dirt path and she sees the person in the distance and there's someone that's like, follow, follow me. And she gets to the person again. And now it's not the Senator Walker. It's Alicia. Alicia turns around. Alicia and Alicia, two Alicias. No, Alicia sees herself. And now she's all about. I can lead, I can follow, I can believe in myself. All I needed was to waste this episode for me to actually be a leader and get this done, right? And then she kind of comes up with the conclusion that she can lead, she has to do these things, she can do it. She wakes up, and now she's in the submarine, all sweaty, all this, and Morgan is there. Oh, you're okay, blah, blah, blah. Oh, how long have I been here? When we we found you, you were passed outside the sub. Who was the girl that brought me here? You were by yourself. There was nobody here with you. Oh, okay. Uh, they get up. They walk into, I guess, the mess hall, whatever you want to call it, another part of the dining part of the sub. They talk about what to do. Alicia's like, what I have to do, don't try to stop me. What are you going to do? You had a dream. Oh, what's the dream? Well, I had a dream that I can be the leader. I can be the person. People can follow me. People believe in Padre, and there is no Padre. I can be Padre. But I can get back to the bunker and they have, they have a radio comms there, and I can reach out to people. People who believe in Padre can come to me, and they can be Padre, right? Negan1 says, Q&A, or ask, do you think any characters are immune to the zombie virus? We haven't seen it yet, so I do not think so. So Alicia is uh, going to leave now. She's going to leave the sub. Morgan's not going to go with her. She, he wants to go with her, but Alicia's like, you need to stay here because if people come here, you need to, you know, there, because I guess they're gonna, I guess Alicia's going to tell people to go to the submarine. At the end, we see the horse and buggy thing. Arno is in the back of where the walkers were that he was walking, or he's transporting around, and he's bleeding. He got bit on the hand, and they stop. And he's like, "What are we stopping? I need medical attention. What are we doing?" He runs out of the back of the like holding thing where the walkers were, and there's this huge crater where it looks like one of the bombs went off, but like there's a big you know, crater in the, in the uh, ground, and there's all these walkers in there, like a bunch of walkers. So they're probably super contaminated. They're probably super radiation walkers. And they're like, oh, man, if any of these get out, it's bad news. And that's how the episode ends. So we're like, hmm, great. So the episode's not actually that bad. I thought it was going to be terrible. I'm not a big fan of filler episodes in anything, and I'm really not a big fan of dream sequence episodes, but they do it in a way that's okay. Um, Ultimately, Paul is a red shirt, comes and goes in the same episode, serves his purpose to motivate Alicia, save Alicia, and get Alicia ready to go too. So I have not watched all of season seven, episode 10, but there's there's a new character there, Ali, who gets killed off there too. 
Charlie is kind of focused with Ali. Um, June, Howard, John Dory Sr. are the stuff I've, I've seen. Um, we'll have to see, you know, where it goes. But they're really focusing on Charlie a little bit more. We still have to see how Charlie and Madison will re- react or interact because Charlie killed Nick. And Madison doesn't know that. Mad- Madison is nowhere to be found in the first two episodes, 9 and 10. Episode 11, I believe, is called Ophelia, and it focuses on Daniel a lot. So is Daniel going to die in season seven, episode 11? I don't know. So we'll have to see how it goes down. But it, it's just like we're supposed to have this war with Morgan and Alicia versus Strand. And there's no war. There's nothing yet. They're building it up just like they built it up in the first part. And now they're still building it up. And it's just like, what? Build it up, build it up, build it up. And then the payoff is like, wah, wah, wah. Like, it's just, I don't know. Do you think Charlie will die right before Madison returning? Um, I don't know why that would happen, Ethan. It doesn't make sense to me why Charlie would die. Um, we want to see. Matt, like The showrunner said in an, in an interview that I saw that Madison is going to return in a big way that's going to have ripple effects into season eight. So I would assume it's going to be with Madison and strand. I don't think Alicia survives season seven. I've been saying in a while now that I believe Alicia dies this season, even before she kind of returned because I believe Alicia Debnam Carey wants to be done with the show. This is our seventh season. I mean, it's a long time to be in the show and she's been around since season one, but With Madison coming back, you still have a Clark on the show. So it kind of works for the people there too. Um, I don't know what it's going to be with Madison. I don't really like Madison ever in the show. But the character is probably, hopefully, going to have a reboot. Hopefully there's some emotion. Hopefully there's some good story behind it. I don't need her to be a hardened woman and she's been through a lot and she's going to have to take down all the people that have come across and she's not messing around anymore, but she's still emotionless and she's, you know, still got the same stupid expressions on her face, no matter if she found a room full of supplies or around a found, found a whole room of, of walkers. It's like the same. She's like, eh. like, it's just, and hopefully there's just more to it, you know, but the fact that she's coming back just, <laughs> Like they're running out of ideas for this show. And it's crazy because you can do whatever you want on the show. You can have stuff that makes sense. You don't have to make it so complicated. You don't have to do this dumb stuff over and over and over and over again, right? Like there's been moments on the show that have been good. There's been season six I've, I enjoyed. But at the same time, there's been other seasons and other parts that are just dumb. Like it's just a waste of time. We're, we're still waiting for major connections with CRM, the walking dead universe, the walking dead stuff too. Right? Like Ethan, I'm sure he said, he asked Kune, will they ever go to Alexandria in season eight? Well, Alexandria is gone now. They haven't filmed. You didn't see Morgan or anybody from fear of the walking dead filming around Alexandria. Now it doesn't mean they could, but <laughs> Now, I wouldn't, AMC The Walking Dead was says, make Brian the showrunner for fear. I mean, that would be amazing. That would be an amazing job. And I think it's a great, it's a great honor to be a showrunner of anything. But I just feel like you would have to just blow up the whole show. And they did that with season four. They kind of like fresh start, reboot, boom, gone. Morgan's here now. Morgan, Dwight, Sherry. But then I like June. I like John. Althea, Althea was okay, but she was basically one big connection for this. She was like the only CRM connection that we had on the show, which we want major connections. We want major stuff. But if they go from Texas in season seven to Savannah in Georgia, how are they going to explain that? Like they can call it Texas. They can call it whatever they want, but I don't know. Robert Long. It's only a TV show. Yes, we're well aware, Robert, that The Walking Dead universe and Fear of the Walking Dead is only a TV show. That's for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we're passionate about 
the Walking Dead universe. We're passionate about, like, the Walking Dead universe means a lot to us. And yes, we know it's not real, but we're, we're super invested in it, right? We're super invested in the universe of things. We care about Carol, Daryl, Negan, Maggie, whoever you like, whatever you like, right? You want the characters to be rewarding. You want it to be an interesting thing. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to. Then Lindsay says, Brian has his own zombie series you or for you to check out. You, Brian, to be a showrunner, you need to get this series out there. I would love to have Fight For Us um, out there somehow, some way. And it's crazy to think of all the different streaming platforms like AMC+, Plus, Paramount+, Plus, uh, Amazon, Netflix, Hulu. Like there's just so many things out there where it could be out there for stuff to have HBO Max, Showtime, whatever. Like there's so many different stuff you can have on there. I would love for it to be on Amazon or whatever, you know, but I don't know how you get this done. I don't know how, I don't know the right players and how to get, you know, whatever too. So, but it's a fun thing to uh, talk about. And my fight for us series is available on Amazon on paperback and digital format on Kindle. Um, I'm actually writing book 16 now. It's called Reckless, Fight for Us, Reckless. It'll be out later this year. I'm on chapter 12, I believe. I think it's 12 because I just finished a chapter yesterday. And um, it would be amazing for uh, this series to come out. And I think it would be a you know, rewarding thing, action-packed stuff. You know, it's a, it's a good series, a zombie apocalypse story set in the future. So, um the not too distant future now as we're approaching, you know, when it, when that starts in a couple of years is actually when that timeline would be for the, for that universe there as well. But, you know, I love the walking dead universe. I love the fans. I love the community. And that's what it always comes down to too. Right. So I love the idea that, um, like the walking dead community and the walking dead really made me get motivated to have my own series and my own story. Because, you know, like Fear of the Walking Dead is interesting. <laughs> it, to me, it, but like they, they jumped the gun with the series starting off the way they did because they were like, we're going to have this show. We have The Walking Dead and then Fear of the Walking Dead that we don't, we don't want to have it be connected with The Walking Dead universe at all. We want it to be its own thing. And you're like, what? Like it's so annoying when like – if you have a zombie story, the characters may not know how to kill a walker or a zombie or a rotter or whatever you're going to call them in your stories. Like, they don't know how to do it right away. In my story, you kind of do. Because in the lore of The Walking Dead and the zombie stuff, you kind of know how to kill a zombie by now, right? If you saw a movie, a comic book, or whatever, you know what it is. Like, it's just crazy to think, like, we don't call them zombies because that word doesn't exist in the Walking Dead universe. Great. <laughs> Great. I don't know how that works, but they justify it that way, too. But then they start to do this and kill stuff off. It's like, imagine if you had a series and it does really well, and then you're going to have a spinoff show, like Fear the Walking Dead. Then you got to start from the ground up again. We're like, we don't want to really want to do that. We don't really want to have all this stuff again. We want to have you know, a branch of the main tree. We want to have it be connected. We already know about walkers and stuff on there too. You know, and it just, it just doesn't work to start over fresh again. You know, Ethan Q and a, did you remember the girl from the walking Dead webisodes red machete? She was in Virginia and then she go back to Georgia. She was the grave of her father. Wouldn't be cool if she continued to Texas or fear. Yeah, I mean, the webisode stuff and the flight 492 or whatever it was and stuff, it's like, yeah, those are cool, but the some of them connected with Fear of the Walking Dead. Some of them, like, I don't, they don't really care. Like, I doubt Kirkman and those people really care anymore about it. They've made tons of money. They've done some great stuff for the show. I don't think we need more spinoffs. I don't think we need more of that stuff. Now, that being said, depends on how the main show ends, right? So say the main show ends, because Fear of the Walking Dead is still so many years behind the main show. It's easy to have time jumps in six months and two years, and all you got to say is three years later, boop, there's your time jump, and you got that. 
And now you can be about the same timeline. But I, if if the walk if you're the Walking Dead doesn't leave the state of Texas, what are you doing, right? You had nuclear fallout. Just leave the state. Just get on a boat, get on some cars, drive out of there, get out of the place. Take a horse and just ride. The whole state of Texas is not nuclear fallout. Parts of it is, but I don't know. Just get out of there. Get out of that place. And hopefully it's explained. And if they're not trying to expand on things and explore different things, like are we going to get 11 seasons of Fear the Walking Dead? Because by that time, that show, unless they have a major overhaul, a major thing, unless they do something, I don't know how they're going to get to, you know, past season eight. Like make season eight the end of it. Wrap it up. Do something where it connects. Like I wouldn't, I would love for them to have time jumps. They go back to Alexandria area, Virginia, and they meet Aaron or Father Gabriel or Judith or whoever's there. Scott, Barbara, Jerry. Whoever, right? It's after all the Commonwealth stuff has ended. The Walking main, the Walking Dead, the main show has ended. I mean, it could do it. Morgan knows his way back, I guess, right? When in doubt, Morgan knows what to do. So we'll see. But they'll keep bringing in new characters for short-term story stuff, killing them off, have a couple things, go a certain way with it. They did the nuclear stuff. They did the submarine stuff. They've already kind of did the the Mexico stuff on the show. They were on the water a couple times now with the submarine and the boat, the yacht or whatever. So they've done different ways. Of what's next for them? What's, ser- what's seriously next for Fear of the Walking Dead? After the war, after Madison comes back, after whoever survives is still around, CRM? Is that going to be our main CRM story? Because World Beyond, in my eyes, was really not that great for what it could have been. Happy Easter, John. But uh, it, it, it was okay. But they had four characters. Well, there's like two main characters, Hope and Iris. Then they took this tangent. And then they had the doctor, the other doctor, you know, Dr. Bennett. And then, there's, you know, it's like, then Jadis came back and Huck, Felix, you know, all these characters came around. But I kind of think, I mean, we can all kind of think that the final, 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 final thing is CRM, right? CRM trying to take over everything. The Commonwealth, Fear the Walking Dead cast, you know, Whatever. Are we going to get a Rick and Michonne spinoff show? A lot of people ask that all the time. I don't, I don't know. Because the, the, the other rumor is, is that Andrew Lincoln is going to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That a lot of their stuff films in Georgia. That we're not going to have Rick movies. We're going to have a Rick and Michonne spinoff show. And again, there's a lot of rumors going around. And I'm sure there's rumors being said that Rick Rick and Michonne's show is going to replace the Daryl and Carol show. I think Norman Reedus loves playing Daryl Dixon. It's his dream role. It's his role of a lifetime. He's not really acting that hard. He's just doing his thing. And yeah, I think that ultimately... Norman wants to play Daryl. What's the real what's the real stuff going around with the Daryl Carroll show? Until AMC comes out and addresses it, right now it's just rumor. So I'll post that video tomorrow. Hopefully you guys will check it out and you know, like, share, all that stuff. But ultimately, the Walking Dead universe, it just feels like it's coming to an end. And I don't know if they feel like they know how to end it. Yeah, like, you know, like, oh, no, we'll, we'll do a spinoff. No, 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 no. We'll do another spinoff. No, no, the Walking Dead universe isn't ending. Don't worry. No, 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 no. 
Why and why are there so many walkers left alive? You know, like there's just so many walkers left around. It's crazy. So I don't know. It's just one of those things where Fear the Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 9. It's not a terrible episode. It's not a great episode. So it's like somewhere in between. You know, it's not a 0. It's not a 10. I don't know. Is it a 5? It's a filler setup episode. When, you know, Season 11, Episode 9 of The Walking Dead was Reapers, Leah, Maggie, Negan, you know, all these, just taking them out. It was just action-packed. Father G taking people out, call me Gabriel, you know, like it was awesome. And then it was kind of slower. So, I mean, we got we got eight episodes, one episode, well, two episodes are down if you watch season seven, episodes nine and ten. Uh, I don't know, man. Bob Smith, see you, Brad. I got to go to work now. Well, thank you, Bob, for coming by. Have a good day at work, and uh, happy Easter if you celebrate Easter. So be safe out there. So I'm like, you know, Fear the Walking Dead has had its moments. I've enjoyed parts of the series overall. It's just not, I don't know, it, it, it's just lackluster in some, some, some parts and a lot of parts. Ethan Q&A, what if Daryl and Carol go to New Mexico and their spinoff and that's how they cross over to Fear the Walking Dead? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, that's, been a, that's been a thing for a while now that Daryl and Carol are going to go across the country and end up in New Mexico for some reason. Like, what are, they, what are they going to New Mexico for? There's also kind of a theory that they go to Charleston for something. He, he brought it up to divert, you know, the Commonwealth soldiers, troopers that go to Charleston. Maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing. But again, we, we just don't know right now. It's just so much up in the air for the Carol and Daryl show. It's even happening now, you know, but we'll have to see. I mean, if you're like me, you'll check out a lot of things. The Walking Dead universe, you know, if, if it wasn't the Walking Dead universe... I don't know if I'd really be invested so much in Fear of the Walking Dead. Like, I watched Black Summer both seasons because they're short episodes. But overall, it's just much to be desired. It's it's like the bare bones basic show of anything. But I'm really excited for The Last of Us on HBO. I think that, that I think that's going to be a great show on uh, HBO Max and HBO whatever for... Uh, the video game Last of Us, the zombie apocalypse story there. Isaac says, episode nine, so boring. Just a bunch of filler fell asleep watching it. Yeah, I mean, it was filler. It was slow. But to me, I don't think it... I liked Paul. You know, Paul was kind of good. And you know, kind of see where they're going with Alicia. Because again, Alicia wasn't around for a while. You know, like she was... She came in at the end of season seven, part A. Part one, whatever you call it, A or B. So the, the end of the first part. So now they're kind of catch us up with it, which I understand it, but it, it's just like you. It, but you, you bet I'm, I'm going to take their tower. I want to take the only thing you love, the tower. And then it's like, season seven, episode nine starts with a dream. And Alicia passed out, and in a house somewhere. Like what? What are you doing? <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I guess she was going to get help to go against the war. So we'll see. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know where Fear of the Walking Dead is going. And it's it's crazy to think like Fear of the Walking Dead is in seven seasons. And the next season is going to be season eight. Like eight seasons of that show. And look at all the craziness and stupid stuff they've done on that show. Look at the villains that were so terrible and laughable. The lady with the socks and sandals. Like, so much stuff like that. Like, they're riding in a hot air balloon. They crashed a plane and put it back together and flew back. <laughs> and you're like, what? And the stuff I have seen about Season 7, Episode 10, it was just so soap opera. Like, people think The Walking Dead is a soap opera. Fear the Walking Dead is super soap opera. 
It's just super cheese at times, too. You know? Tony asks, do you think AMC do running zombies in Tales or Walking Dead Europe? Well, I don't know about Walking Dead Europe. I don't think that's like a thing just yet. But I don't think Tales... I mean, they could... I think Tales of the Walking Dead wants to be six different stories. One of them's going to try to be funny. One of them's going to be about Alpha. And the rest are going to be, what are they talking about? Right? Like, we don't have a connection with any of these characters except for Alpha and if Tyrese is in an episode. Hopefully you saw my recent video about um, <laughs> just that, like, beer bottle hot air balloon. Like, ee- like what are you doing what are you doing but the um the variant cohort walkers there's been some potential news and spoilers about that we could see them in you know part three of the walking dead season 11 which would make sense because why did like first of all if you didn't watch walking dead world beyond at all let alone the end the post, not even the post credit scene where they talked about variant walkers. It's not going to make sense to you. Right? Like, so say if you just, if you just watch The Walking Dead, you don't watch anything out of, out of, out of part of The Walking Dead universe. It's going to have to be explained in a way that makes sense. And if they're grabbing doorknobs and holding knives and doing stuff like that, are they just trying to connect with season one where they were climbing fences and holding coffee cups and holding stuffed animals and rocks and whatever and, you know, opening, trying to open doorknobs? Is that what it's trying to be? We haven't seen it since season one. So then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and basically a whole season 11 into the third part. Never seen it since season one. The first couple episodes, the first two episodes, basically. And then it comes back again at the end of the series in season 11. Why are they doing that? Like, what are they doing? How'd the variant walkers get here? Is it the virus mutating? Is it explained? We still don't even know the origin of the series, of the virus. We don't know a lot of things. And we're probably never going to know. And it is what it is, you know? But are they setting things up for... A spinoff series. The Maggie Negan stuff with the variant stuff. Is Fear of the Walking Dead going to be the main show? Will they go to that? Will we ever see the CRM again in Fear of the Walking Dead? Because Althea is gone. The actress you know, isn't going to be seen again in season seven. So is she going to come back again in season eight? With Isabel. Like on a chopper. Like, what's up guys? We back. I mean, she knows Madison. She met Madison. Althea. Right? I think so. Season four. So, I don't know. Hey, Dawn. So, ultimately, guys, I don't know where it's going with this stuff. Fear the Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 9 is a filler episode. It's it's slower paced. And, yeah, it's just filler. And it minimally adds to the story. You know, Alicia's going back to the bunker to contact people, to meet up, so she can be Padre. You know, and I guess Padre, remember we were thought Padre was a place, South Padre Island, it's this, it's that, it's circled on a map, and then it's like, nothing, nothing. It's laughable, nothing. Like, it's a folder. It's, a, it's an acronym for some government program. And you're like, Wow, the build-up. The build-up is always so much bigger than the actual payoff in this world, the Walking Dead universe. And it's frustrating on the Walking Dead and everything there, too. You're just like, ugh. But again, it's not... It's season. I don't, I don't want to come across as season 7, episode 9 is the worst episode ever. Because it's not the worst episode. It's not a great episode. It's not, it's not the best. Like I said, it's a solid 5 out of 10. But we want bigger episodes, and we're, we're supposed to get a big war. We're supposed to get big things there too, you know. I don't know. So hopefully uh, next week I'll be back, guys. Uh, I'll be talking about season seven episode. We'll talk about nine a little bit then too, episode ten. 
um, you know, and then maybe 11. And we're have, we'll just talk about, we're going to talk about Fear of the Walking Dead going forward. And then if there's any other news, you know, with the Walking Dead universe, it's always there too. So stay tuned for our, you know, I try to get daily videos all the time, but um, it's getting harder with the Walking Dead on break. But if we get more news and stuff like that, well, we share it with you guys. So make sure you are a subscriber, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for being here. I'll be back next Sunday for our live stream. Happy Easter. If you celebrate it, uh, be safe out there. Don't eat too much candy. You know, it's all right. But, um, yep. So I think Talking Dead is back tonight with uh, the actor who plays Paul. Probably one of the showrunners and somebody else on I'm not sure with Chris Hardwick. So I'll be back next Sunday uh, to talk about the Walking Dead universe as a whole. Thank you guys for being here. I truly appreciate it. But remember, guys, with hard work, dedication, belief, and sacrifice, you can truly achieve your goals. Believe in yourself. You can do it. It's about love, support, staying positive, making memories, working hard. You'll get stuff done. I'll be back next Sunday for another live stream. Stay safe.